Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Monday, June 17th. We will continue to have gusty and strong winds across the southern areas of the Great Basin today as a strong cold front sweeps through the region. We will see an increase in winds from what we saw yesterday in southern and eastern areas of Utah and the Arizona Strip. So we will see those gusts between 30 and 40 miles per hour and in some areas higher with low relative humidity. As the cold front sweeps through the north, we will see showers and occasional thunderstorms in the far north, even some new snowfall in the central Idaho mountains. Our critical fuel line is indicated here and that will change very little over the next couple of days as this cold front sweeps through the region, bringing much cooler temperatures. However, relative humidity really won't be affected very much and we will still see very dry conditions and low relative humidity across Nevada and Utah. Could see some lingering showers in the far north on third or tomorrow on Tuesday. However, by Wednesday, dry conditions are expected across the region and we will see some breezy winds and low relative humidity over southern eastern Utah into the Arizona Strip again. But these winds will be much weaker than what we'll see today with only winds between about 15 and 20 miles per hour. Precipitation over the last 24 hours is shown here, just some light showers in the north and we are seeing some showers already this morning with that cold front moving through and we have had not had any lightning. Great Basin fire activity continues to increase. We are continuing to see smaller fires across the region with a couple of large fires. Over the last seven days, any precipitation has been in the north, but generally below normal, but we have had a few pockets of near or just above normal precipitation in parts of Idaho and northeast Nevada, but you can st still see the very dry regions over southern and western areas. Our ERC point map indicates this well with ERCs above the 80th or 90th percentile over much of the southern and eastern half of Utah, even some areas above the 97th percentile. We are seeing continued drying over western and northern areas and a lot more areas that are in the yellow circles above the 50th percentile and some areas above the 70th. Looking at some of our fuel moistures over the Arizona Strip and southern and eastern Utah, which is where we are seeing critical winds and RHs today. ERCs are above normal and in the far south are actually near or just shy of record highs, but you can kind of see the green forecast line and these ERCs will level out or even drop a little bit with the cold front moving through and also some moisture later this week. 100 and 1000 hour fuel moistures are below normal in the Fish Lake and parts of the Dixie in southern Utah. Our satellite loop from this morning shows that area of low pressure moving into the Pacific Northwest, which will push that cold front through the Great Basin. And you can see the moisture out ahead of it. And this is also what will be causing our stronger winds across not only southern areas, but really all of the Great Basin as this cold front sweeps through. So our weather pattern for later today, that cold front will push across most of the north as we move through today. So we will continue to see that lower fire potential in the north with, that, with the colder temperatures and with the moisture moving across Idaho. However, again, we do have high risk over southern areas of Utah and the Arizona Strip for those stronger winds and low relative humidity. Looking at the relative humidity, we are still seeing single digits and low teens anywhere from western and central Nevada, south and east. You can see the increase in humidity over northeast Nevada and northern Utah. But looking at the wind gusts on the right, we will see those stronger winds really across all areas of the Great Basin throughout today, not only during the afternoon, which we would normally see, but really through this morning and even going into the evening and overnight hours as this cold front sweeps through. We will also see a strong directional shift with the winds out ahead of the cold front. Much of the winds will be out of the south and southwest today, but you can see by later today as that cold front pushes through, we will see a wind shift to the northwest. Again, temperatures with this cold front significantly dropping. We will see highs today only in the 40s and 50s in the central Idaho mountains, and then 60s and 70s as far south as central Nevada. And we will even see some cooling in the far south. You can see the probability of precipitation on the right. So again, the better chances of that wetting rain and some higher elevation snowfall and more widespread showers will be across central Idaho. As we move into Tuesday, this cold front pushes east, so we will see a decrease in moisture and winds, but still some remnant moisture in the far north. No high risk on Tuesday. And you can see, even though the cold front pushed through with those cooler temperatures, relative humidity is still very dry right behind it. Single digits as far north as the Oregon border and really across all of Nevada and even parts of Utah and Arizona. But winds significantly decreased on Tuesday with generally light winds region wide. Temperatures on Tuesday will warm a bit, but still in the 60s and 70s across much of northern Nevada and Utah and into the 50s in central Idaho with still some of those spotty lighter precipitation showers. On Wednesday, you can see another trough moving in 
so we will see a slight uptick in winds, maybe even some showers and thunderstorms in the far north, no high risk. Relative humidity remains low and winds again start to pick up in the far south, but again most of those gusts around 20, uh, maybe 25 miles per hour with wind out of the southwest. Temperatures will continue to warm, so we, we will see highs back up into the low to mid 80s over the northern half of the region and near 100 in the far south with again drier conditions. Three-day precipitation, any of that moisture will remain up north with, again, some good, good areas of wetting rains over central Idaho. As we move into Thursday, we do have a trough moving in and some moisture that continues to work its way from Texas across the Four Corners area. So we could see some showers and thunderstorms over southeast Utah on Thursday, even into northern Arizona. And you can see how the seven-day responds to that. So we lose some of that brown area with some of that moisture moving in. Again, showers and thunderstorms, but also some increase in humidity. This will continue on Friday as well. It looks like any thunderstorms that move into southern and eastern Utah will have some moisture with them. So it could be initially a mix of wet and dry, but definitely some thunderstorms producing some rainfall. And then as we move into Saturday, still some lingering moisture along the Colorado border, drier conditions further west. And then going into Sunday, we will see those drier conditions region-wide and temperatures will continue to heat up later this week going into the weekend with a return of the low to moderate fire potential in the far south. Seven-day total precipitation, obviously everything up north is this next uh, couple of days. And then everything over eastern Utah into Arizona is later this week as that moisture works north and west. The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us from June 24th through the 30th shows warmer and drier conditions for the end of the month. So after this moisture in eastern Utah later this week, we may see drier conditions through the end of the month until early July. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates. And as a reminder, we are issuing these webcasts now seven days a week along with all of our predictive services products.